The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11 Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Tusculum Pioneers traveled 484 miles to take on the Elizabeth City State Vikings. Hello again, everyone. Brian Staten for the Frankie DeBus Show. To be joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus coming up in moments. It's not necessarily a tradition rivalry, but for the Elizabeth City State Vikings out of the CIAA, they're the only team to have ever defeated the Pioneers from that conference. Came back in 2009 a 49 to 24 final. Last year the Pioneers take on Elizabeth City State and Bo Cordell has maybe his best game ever as a Pioneer. He went just 31 of 42 but he threw for nearly 600 yards, 596 yards in that win, nearly 800 yards of total offense. Yes, we referred to the past to bring it to the future. It's the fifth longest trip in program history, 484 miles to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, which is on the Albemarle Sound. Pioneers have never won there, and we were facing some different field conditions, not because of the field itself, but because of what Mother Nature was about to present to us from first half to second half. It's not a pretty game for the Pioneers offensively. It's Malcolm Pendergrass did not have the numbers, as we've referred to the past once again, that Bo Cordell had last year. As a matter of fact, threw for under 100 yards in the game, completed just 4 of 19 in the first half alone, and struggled in the passing game, but did not struggle on the ground game as he rushed for nearly 130 yards and was the game's leading rusher. But the Pioneers did outgain Elizabeth City State offensively just under 300 yards, both teams, 293 to 287, but a late drive touchdown, nine minutes off the clock, proved to be too costly for the Pioneers, and Elizabeth City State stays perfect against Tusculum at home from Roebuck Stadium by a final of 18 to 10. We'll bring in Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. We'll talk about it. You'll get a chance to see how the field conditions change from first half to second half for yourself when we return for the Frankie DeBus Show. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I think it's a world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not. Nah. When we step up 
up on the field. That's right. That small town, but we still do it very big. And ours, back and ours, back and ours, back and ours. We grind hard for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back and ours, back and ours, back and ours, back and ours. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBun Show. The Tusculum Pioneers fall to Elizabeth City State this past week by a final score of 18 to 10 in a defensive battle. But the Pioneer offense struggling just a little bit, stumping their toe, especially in the first half when they could have taken advantage. Second half was exactly what Elizabeth City wants to do, and that's run the football. We join, we're joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. And I think last week when we previewed the game, they pro I, we don't see it a whole lot. They like to run downhill. And they had an opportunity to do that, and what you had hoped to do was to take them out of what their comfort zone was, and the game just didn't dictate that. Uh, I really, Brian, I told uh, – our defensive staff, Mike Isaac, after the game, that I, I thought we played as well defensively as we have in a long time. I mean, that they had a good plan. I knew if they, uh, if they were having some success, that they would continue to do it. And they lined up and just really pounded it right at us. And quite frankly, we stopped them. I mean, we did a great job. We only, we literally gave up one touchdown from a defensive standpoint all day long. And uh, you know, not that, not that they overpowered us, but they had a good plan in place, and we did a good job of getting in line what we needed to and you know doing what we had to do to, to make them punt the football and defensive kids played so hard uh, I mean I was just really 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 proud of how hard they played. From the first drive I think we were a little bit shocked that the first half played out the way it did. Was it a turning point in that first half? Was it a maybe a loss of enthusiasm after it wasn't easy to score on that first drive but it sure did appear to be pretty easy. I, I don't know, Brian. I've watched it several times, and you're exactly right. I mean, we're, we're doing some really good things offensively the first drive, and uh, we've, we've created some, some situations for us by things we're doing, but we're moving the ball. We're having some success. We're throwing and catching. We're protecting the football, and I uh, felt like we were going to be able to do that all day, and then uh, I don't know if there's exactly a turning point, but uh, when Matt Levine got his helmet knocked off over on the sidelines, which I'm sure we'll see here in a little while, we just never regained our composure, uh, sort of let the game slip through our hands at that point in time. And again, defensively, we gave up one touchdown, but uh, we ended up getting a punt blocked for a safety. And then when we kicked off that for a safety, they returned it for a touchdown. And you know, we go into half, we kick a field goal right before the half to make it 10 to 9. And it's a, it's a great football game. And then a torrential downpour occurs and a lot of things change, but we both got to play in it. We just didn't finish the game. It's a total difference from first half to second half. And don't just take our word for it. Let's go ahead and take a look at your first half highlights, the Tusculum Pioneers and the Elizabeth City State Vikings. It is a uh, long drive, 484 miles to get there. You guys had a chance to rest, stay overnight, and we come out. And uh, truthfully, I, we thought we were going to avoid all of the rain. Yeah, I kept looking at the Weather Channel and trying to decide what we were going to do for the coin toss. We were going to defer or t try to take the ball if we want it based on the weather. And it looked like it was going to miss us. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really worried, I guess, beyond the start of the game. But uh, it, it was a beautiful day, quite frankly. It was great conditions uh, until the start of the second half. But we, uh, we come out and we've got a little scheme planned for them and, and trying to give ourselves an advantage. And we start uh, Mr. Ware there at running back. And Malcolm's running the show. We've got to hang on the football. It probably was... Uh, a little bit of what was going to happen eventually, but we've got to do a little bit better job of hanging on to the football there. But Malcolm keeps it here and gets another six or eight, so all of a sudden it's, it's third and one. And first possession, I think, is always very important. I think we're doing a good job up front blocking them and trying to decide what we want to do, and Malcolm keeps the football. And we convert, and it's a, it's a good opportunity for us to get going. All right, the splits, I saw this in camp, and I think a lot of people are confused about the setting. you got your tackles lined up way out there in a slot position, and a lot of people up in the booth were saying, is that even legal? Well, what you're doing is you're spreading them out, and then once they start to adjust, then I think you go back to what you want to do. Here it's third down and a yard. You convert Justin Ghost for four yards, but very effective, and I think it really confused them. Obviously, they're thinking, hey, they threw for nearly 800 yards on us last year. Maybe they'll do that again. Well, we, we just felt like we needed to have a little something in place for them, and we've worked hard on that set, and it, it just creates something that they need to work on, and uh, we did a good job of, 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 doing, of converting. This is one of Malcolm's better balls of the day. Great job there. I think that's Justin Houston that makes the catch and gets us inside the 40-yard line, and you know we're, we're doing some things we want to do and actually doing what we want to do as an offense right now. Houston, a catch of 15 yards, and again, he didn't have another catch until late in the second half. D.J. Haney comes in, runs downhill hard for about four minutes, for four yards. Elizabeth City realizes they're not just going to throw it every down. They take a timeout, try to adjust a bit defensively, and then Malcolm just uses his legs 
um, and is just an athlete in space. Yeah, great decisions and a good job with the football. You know, we, we feel like he can do a lot of things with his legs, and we've got to find a way to, to keep the, hands, the, the ball in his hands when he's making some plays for us. And here we have a little screw up, but he does a good job of tucking his head and getting the first down. And that was the key fourth down, fourth down and two, picks up three yards on the day. Malcolm had 24 carries for 132 yards, 116, make that 118 yards rushing in the first half. So the Pioneers who converted a fourth down, a third down on this drive. DJ Haney for two yards, Pendergrass uh, for a couple of yards and a personal foul. I think uh, Elizabeth City's defense was on the field a little bit longer than they wanted to. A little bit of a late hit here is leading with the helmet. Yeah, I think that's what the call was. You know, he flew in there with his helmet and... You know, we end up converting there, and Malcolm throws a, a decent ball to West. West has got to catch that football. It's opportunity to get in the end zone, and you know we uh, we're not doing a very good job protecting up front. But Malcolm does a great job with his legs and gets the ball inside the five. And I think we turn around, and hand it to, uh, to Fernando, and he gets in the end zone after breaking a couple tackles. But it's a great way for us to start. Great job of our big boys pulling out there and making things happen for us. I think that's big Patrick Benson. Uh, but great job getting in the end zone, giving us some life here early. Fernando Smith for four yards, the point after by Esparza. Caps a 16-play, 81-yard drive, five minutes and 15 seconds on the drive for the Tusculum Pioneers, and obviously a uh, very critical uh, first drive to get that lead early with the, in, the impending weather as it was. Now defensively, you come in, you're hitting them in the mouth. Uh, the very first drive, Petey Boone, big 236-pound back, Forced to by a fumble by Brandon Bartlett, recovered by Elizabeth City, and that could have been a dangerous situation for the Vikings. Great job there by Brandon. Brandon's been a, a great surprise for us, making the plays he's making at linebacker and does a good job getting it started. And here we got him covered up. I think that's Laronte Archie breaking up the pass, and we're doing a good job controlling the line of scrimmage right now. I'm doing a good job. Our kids are doing what we coach them to do, and we're in place right there. If they'd have caught it, we're probably going to make the tackle, which is all we could do on third down long. And they punt the football back to us, and we're Feeling pretty good about things. Will Boyette with their backup quarterback forced into a start as uh, Houghton, their starting quarterback, injured his shoulder last week, had to sit out and miss this game. So a three and out, and the, they are forced to punt. Pioneers go uh, drive for 10 yards on their next drive, forced to punt it away, and then Elizabeth City State gives it back, which is where we pick up the drive here. Pendergrass for 13 yards, Pendergrass for 8 yards. So using his leg, getting in, in space, uh, for the Pioneers on the third offensive series for Tusculum. And, you know, Coach, we want him to run. He's got some open receivers, and I think right now it's we, we realize there's going to be growing pains with Malcolm, and he's got to trust his reads. Well, I think that's exactly right. I mean, he's uh, he's got to hang in there a little bit more. He's got to see it develop. Uh, we've got to be able to, to throw it and catch it. And, you know, here we throw one to Justin, and unfortunately he drops it. It's unlike him to drop the football. But, We've, uh, we're doing some good things. That's Fernando Smith there, probably the best run he's had uh, all through camp as well. I'm excited for what he brings to the table. But Malcolm's just got to be patient, let the game come to him. And uh, this is a big run here for us to give us a first down. Malcolm Pendergrass for 15 on a third down uh, completion, or a third down. And maybe the turning point of the game right here. Yeah, Matt makes a great catch. And... Uh, by rule, this is exactly the call that's supposed to be made. If you get your helmet knocked off and you continue to play, it's a 15-yard penalty for a delay a game. And they talked about it, and it was exactly the right call. And uh, so we're, you know, we're, we're okay still. It's we got the ball inside the 25-yard line, and then this next play, we get a pass interference, which I think was a good call too. Justin put his hands on the back of that guy, and all of a sudden we're backed up to the 35-yard line, trying to get inside the five. It just becomes a challenge. We throw one up here to. To Dion, actually, he, he, he would usually make that catch, but he didn't then. He got both hands on the ball. He's got to make it. There's a lot of drop balls for the first half. Malcolm Pendergrass went just 4 of 19 passing. Of course, we had a couple. We saw Justin Houston earlier makes that catch. There's a really good chance that he scores on that play. So on first and 25, Dion can't come up with the catch. Pendergrass can't get the pass to Fernando Smith. Uh, or does, and he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. We move into the second quarter, and then Jonathan Diliberto just behind the defense and maybe a fingertip by the defensive back. Yeah, I thought he could have made the catch on, uh, from the sideline view, but uh, after watching on film, I don't know if they got a piece of it or not, but those are balls that we've got to catch. I mean, Dion should have caught his. Diliberto should have caught his. Or some uh, Justin can't drop the ball. I mean, when you're playing with a quarterback that's trying to get his feet wet, we gotta, we got to help him a little bit and make those catches. All right, so the Pioneers forced to punt because of the penalties, couldn't attempt a field goal from that long range. So we turn it over in the second quarter to the defense, and really the, the uh, Elizabeth City starting to run downhill 
on the Pioneers. You get Kenny King, he's a big 220 pound back going right up the middle. Petey Boone going right up the middle at 236, yard, or 236 pounds. Then you get them inside the 10 yard line coach and you get the big break you need to fumble. Huge by our defense, standing strong, coming up with the football. I think that's Rocky Jones uh, that comes up with it there. I'm not 100% sure, but it's just great by our defensive football team to our backs against the wall. We're trying to find a way to stop them. We end up uh, holding them and, and getting the football. You can't move the ball offensively. You're inside your five yard line and Elizabeth City realizes they've got the momentum. So third down they go. Fourth down, they go. Second effort stopped at the one yard line is Kenny King by Kashad Lyons and Brandon Bartlett. You turn away the threat once again with another goal line stand. Again, inside the five yard line, our defense steps up strong, keeps them out of the end zone. I don't know if uh, we've played this well defensively in a long, long time to make those stops. And they got us backed up here. We, uh, we don't get a very good snap. Uh, we, we know we got to have a good snap and one kick it out of there, and we don't do that. And they end up blocking the punt and getting a safety, which I'm okay with. We take the field and uh, have to kick off after a safety. The punt actually is really good, and we just we don't do a very good job covering. They got a good athlete that gets the ball in their hands back there, and he ends up taking it to the house. And you know that was probably the biggest turning point of the game right there, getting the punt blocked. And even though it's just nine to seven right now, we we still we should have kept them out of the end zone once again. Our defense is playing their their hind ends off, and we're we're not performing very well from a special team standpoint. A lot of things happened in that in that case. You have all the momentum for the uh, goal line stand, and then you can't move the ball offensively inside your five. Get the punt blocked. That's the second punt that you saw. The first was a kick prior to the, you know, let's play. And so they had to kick it again. It was a better punt, and it was returned by Lovey Banks Row, 67 yards for the touchdown and he had a touchdown last year in the loss to the Pioneers. Now, the offensive drive to end the first half, and again, I, I thought, we have to do something. We have to make you turn something around. Pendergrass, Pendergrass, running, running, getting five yards, getting a penalty to help out, moving it into Viking territory. Yeah, he does a good job here uh, running, running the offense when it felt like we needed to get inside field goal range. And we've had some success offensively, but we sort of stumped our toe. We, field position is, is tough. We were backed up inside the five there after we stopped them. So, Kind of hard to get a lot of things going, but uh, we got to throw and catch that football right there. That may be the one actually Matt did catch. Uh, we got to get it up a little bit, give him a chance to run. But great protection up front. You know, Malcolm's got all day trying to figure out what he wants to do with it. Ends up keeping it, getting another 10, 15 yards, and giving us opportunity to get inside and get a first down. On third down, the Pioneers converted today. What they did not do a bad job on third downs uh, on the afternoon at nine of 19 or eight of 19 on the day and two of them on this drive. Pendergrass just taking what the defense was giving him and took off for about 15 yards. The pass completion to, Le to uh, Le Matt Levine was for 15 yards on third down. Takes off there on third down and short for a first down. And then you're moving, now you're working against the clock. Try the jump ball to your 6'10 tight end. Might have been a little bit of a jersey tug there and he couldn't elevate where he wanted to incomplete. And they send in Jose Esparza with four seconds on the clock. Not pretty at all, but we did get it through the uprights. So. Kick goes through as the half ends, and we were fortunate there. We didn't get the ball up off the ground, but Jose gives us three points, and we go in at halftime ahead 10-9. to nine. Yeah, The Tuscaloosa Pioneers take the lead 10-9 to nine right at the end of the first half. Uh, exciting first half. You saw all, some sunshine. You saw some overcast conditions. You saw a dry field is what you saw. When we come back, you're not going to see any of that. Second half, when we return, the Frankie DeBuss Show right here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. 
Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show. Tuscaloosa falls to Elizabeth City State, 484 miles away from home this past weekend by a final score of 18 to 10. We take a look at our second half. Pioneers are leading at 10 to 9 when we turn the page and uh, old man weather rears his ugly head. It's crazy, Brian. How it went from a beautiful afternoon to it just, uh, it was raining so hard there at halftime. I didn't even know if we would start the second half. And, uh, the officials decided there was no lightning, so we we're going to go play and see all the puddles of water on the field. And fortunately, we were kicking off, and we ended up getting down there and, and stoning them a little bit and holding them. And I think they run four plays here, and we get a lightning delay and have to go inside. But uh, weather definitely become a factor in this football game. All right, did have the delay, did have the lightning that did happen. The uh, the Vikings did eventually have to punt. And a turning point here in the second half. Pioneers have the ball offensively, looking for Powell just off his fingertips. This is the second drive for the Pioneers. And uh, really, the turnover, wasn't, weren't sure how it would affect us. This is the end result. Surprise, they were able to get that field goal up and in. Yeah, it was a good kick by them. I didn't think they would make it either. But again, we're playing so well defensively. We've held them there once we uh, unfortunately had an interception. We got to hit West there when he's open. And the uh, ball was tipped and went in their hands. And we held them to kick three, and we ended up holding them there. And, and they come back out, uh, now they're, they're lining up, just running it right at us because of the weather conditions. And I thought we performed pretty well defensively. They just kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, which I anticipate them doing until they end up running it in the end zone. But that's the only true score we gave up all day from a defensive standpoint. P.D. Boone scores from two yards, capping a 19-play, 70-yard drive that took nine minutes off of the clock from the third quarter into the fourth quarter. So the Pioneers with the backs uh, against the wall, basically with about six and a half minutes to play, trail the game 18 to 10, take over deep in their own territory inside the 30. A penalty moves them back inside the uh, 15 here in just a few moments, the hold that occurred right there. This is a big third down play on the run, third and 12. Pendergrass actually picked up the first down yardage, but moving back to the 15 and you're just asking a guy to make a play here, and Deion Hicks does. Yeah, it's a great job. Deion makes, goes up and makes the catch, gives us a first down, and uh, we just try to give him a chance. Michael made a good throw. Just go out, throw it out there and give him a chance to catch it, and he does. And uh, We end up getting a big conversion. We go back to him here, and he slips and falls a little bit. But that's sort of how the day went. We, 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 gotta, we know it's wet out there. we got to do a better job of hanging on the ball. And here's Malcolm once again getting us a big first down and converting. Putting it on the ground. Malcolm's got a tendency to cut and have the ball hit his knee. All right, maybe a little bit for, for Pendergrass as well. He underthrows Houston on that ball, and he was open. He's behind the defense, but the weather conditions, I think, play a factor in that somewhat. Starting to rain once again. You're looking to go downfield. You can't get Deion Hicks the ball once again. That was on fourth down, so you turned it over. Elizabeth City takes over, and then the killing drive. They convert on third down and four. Fourth down and goal. They give it back to you, and this is how the game ends with the Cal Stanford lateral. Yeah, we practice this a little bit. You get in this position, you get in this predicament, you never know what might happen. And we're trying. I mean, our kids are giving it everything they got here, just tossing it around, trying to get us a touchdown. And unfortunately, we shouldn't even be in this situation. We didn't play as well as we should have or could have, but that's the way the game ends. And uh, again, we let one get away from us that I thought we had an opportunity of winning. I honestly thought that we were going to break it out, but the there was a penalty flag that was thrown for an illegal forward pass, and it came after... I believe it was Houston tried to catch it. He was hit, and the ball went forward to an offensive lineman. Um, had we scored, it would not have mattered anyway. Uh, things I take out of the game, you know, we knew that there'd be growing pains with with Malcolm and, and in the passing game. We've got to make sure we catch the football, obviously, but um, uh, frustrating because I think the defense played as good as they could have played, maybe in the last couple of years. No question, Brian. I mean, we we made some plays that. We haven't been making, and we had two huge goal line stands that we haven't made. Uh, I just thought we played really well. I was really proud of how hard our, our defensive kids played. And, uh, unfortunately, we've got to play better in all phases, and uh, we just got to we got to get a little bit more crisp at what we're doing. We got to eliminate some mistakes. We had way too many penalties, and I really can't complain much about the penalties. I thought a lot of them we we brought on ourselves. So. Uh, we, we did go to Elizabeth City and let one get away, but nothing we can do about it. We've got to move on. I get a big physical football game in the contest. When we come back, we'll take a look at our players of the week and then preview Tusculum and North Greenville. That's when the Frankie DeBuff Show continues.
Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Tusculum falls to Elizabeth City State by a final score of 18 to 10. Not necessarily our best offensive game during the Mark Kolb era. As a matter of fact, might have been the worst performance. But if you'll recall, 2007, Corey Russell didn't necessarily get off to the type of start that Coach Kolb wanted him to, and in Corey Russell's redshirt freshman year as well, really struggled offensively in that type of an offensive system. Now Malcolm Pendergrass, just keep in mind, starting quarterback was a wide receiver last year just taking over. Did struggle offensively. We'll see. LR lost their true first game of the year last year to Concord, reeled off enough wins to make it to the national championship game last year. So, what we're saying, don't give up on this team. A lot of guys didn't give up in the game, and they are our players of the week. Let's take a look at them. Our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week is another offensive lineman, and Jake Bridwell is one of those four-year starters for the Pioneers. The senior from Duncan, South Carolina, from Burns High School, is an athletic director, honor roll, honoree as well for our Offensive Player of the Week. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Player of the Week is another senior, Dominic James, the linebacker from St. Petersburg, Florida, out of St. Petersburg High School, also a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. He has 99 career tackles, and he has those 99 because he picked up eight of them in the loss to Elizabeth City State, including a tackle for loss. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Player of the Week is our punter, Hunter Cantrell. The freshman out of Sparta, Tennessee, out of White County High School, did his best to change field position and didn't have a good field position to pump from at all times. Did have the one punt blocked out of bounds, but his eight punts, a 41.4 yard average along a 50, and had one inside the 20. Our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game had a couple of them. There was one early on a fumble recovery, but we'll go with the second defensive goal line stand. King from the two yard line on fourth and goal. King hit shy of the goal line and he will not get in. Down to at the one yard line and the Pioneers turn him away. What a goal line stand for the Pioneers. Time to take a look at our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. For the Pioneers, the numbers would say they had the opportunity to win the game. 208 yards rushing to Elizabeth City's 188 yards. Passing, though, Tusculum just 79 yards passing. Elizabeth City, known as the running team, threw for just 105. Tusculum completed just 8 of 29 attempts with an interception. The backup quarterback, Will Boyette, for Elizabeth City State went 9 of 20, but did not throw an interception. Tusculum had 79 nine plays of offense, 287 yards, Elizabeth City State, 77 plays, 293 yards of offense. Four fumbles, one loss for Elizabeth City. Tusculum did not lose a fumble, but did have the interception. Time of possession, 27-27 uh, for the Pioneers. Elizabeth City, thanks to their nine-minute drive in the third to the fourth quarter, 32 minutes and 33 seconds. Tusculum 8 of 19 on third downs. Elizabeth City did not convert a third down in the first half, converted five in the second half, three on the touchdown drive. They were two of four on fourth downs as well. Tusculum went one of two, two of three in the red zone, and the Vikings of Elizabeth City State finishing two of five in the red zone. Your Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. 
Coach DeBus will come back and join us. We'll wrap up this week's show and preview possibility of what will happen next week with the Crusaders of North Greenville University. That's when we come back with the Frankie DeBus TV show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. And Welcome back into the Frankie DeBun Show. The Tusculum Pioneers fall to Elizabeth City State this past week. Turn the page. The Crusaders of North Greenville University come to Pioneer Field Saturday night. Should be a great atmosphere. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff game. Coach, this is a team that uh, at home were pretty good. On the road, not so good. So uh, how do you turn the page on Elizabeth City and, and get those mistakes behind you? And how do you get the confidence back in this offense realizing we have so many weapons don't put your head down. How do you get that? How do you turn that page for this team? Brian, you, we just got to go do it. I mean, our, our kids know what kind of ability we have on our team. We know what kind of players we have. Uh, we've done a good job of uh, coming up with schemes for our kids to be successful, and we can't hang our heads. There's a lot of football left to play. We're playing a North Greenville team that will be very, very sound, very well coached. Jeff Farrington does a great job with them, and, you know, they, they had Wofford on the ropes. Uh, they were leading Wofford at halftime last Saturday, so. Uh, they're a good football team. Uh, they're one and one like we are. Their first opponent might not have been as formidable, formidable compared to what they played Saturday, which sounds like the Tuscan Pioneers. So we're both still reaching and trying to see exactly what we, we may have as football teams. And uh, I know they'll come across the mountain with expectations of getting a win, and we're going to do everything we can to, uh, to try to keep that from happening. Yeah, I invite you out. Going to have great atmosphere again yes, for Saturday night here at home. Yes, we are going to be a great atmosphere. We're going to do a lot of festivities. Uh, David Martin's working hard on making sure we got a lot of people in the stands and got a lot of great things happening. Tusculum Pioneers, the North Greenville Crusaders, Saturday night kickoff at 7 o'clock. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. The Pioneers kick it off. Join us on the Pioneer Sports Network beginning at 6 o'clock with the Pioneer Kickoff Show. We'll kick it off at 7 a.m. 1450 WSMG worldwide through TusculumPioneers.com. And you can also watch the game for free. Check out live stats for free as well online through TusculumPioneers.com. Paige, you did a wonderful job. Thank you for braving the the weather conditions with us at Elizabeth City State. Look forward to see Cody Santmeyers this week as he'll provide a lot of the video that you'll see for the next Frankie DeBus show, Tusculum versus North Greenville. For Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBus, for Nathan Humbert, and for Paige, I'm Brian Staten. Till next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11E Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity.
The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.